Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I've got an awesome video for you guys today, and here's what it comes down to. We got a new piece of test equipment, and I am so excited to share this with you. This is a piece of equipment that I've wanted for a long time, and quite honestly, the reason why we didn't is because there are a lot of pieces of equipment that help us to build content and share the story with you. Oscilloscopes, multimeters, all this good stuff to paint the picture and really explain what we're walking through. And this is not a measurement device. Drop a comment down below if you think that you know what this piece of equipment is, but it's so important. It's kind of like an electronic load, but we have one of those now. This is, well, when it works well, it's one of my favorite pieces of equipment. In this case, it is a dual channel, though that's not really important, and it's USB controlled, and that's not really important. I'm sure it'll come in handy at some point, but I'm not really worried about that right now. We got a power brick. You probably saw it on the label. Uh, looks like it takes five volts. Sweet. Got some test leads, but this, <laughs> never mind that. Did you just hear the fallout of me throwing this crap <laughs> behind me? Here's what it is. It is a nice China special. Coolertron is the brand name, if you can call that a brand name. It's basically a cheap function generator, an arbitrary waveform generator. And why are we making a video about this? Well, because there's a lot of things that the super, super, super cheap waveform generators simply cannot do. And that is, this is very likely a 50 ohm terminated BNC. If you have a 50 ohm terminated output and you have a 50 ohm load and you set it to one volt peak to peak, there's typically a 50 ohm series impedance that will result in one volt on the output. There we go. I think I got, I think I got all my ohms and volts straight that time around. And if you don't have a load, what you'll see is actually two volts peak to peak. And so I'm going to use two of these test leads to verify this. I'm going to use this BNC to feed directly into the oscilloscope. And I'm going to use one of these BNC to cable ties to go to the one mega ohm impedance test lead. Because scopes are all 50 ohm impedance. Well, when you set them to 50 ohm impedance and you don't have any test leads. We are testing the new piece of sketchy test equipment to see how good it really is. If the reviews can be trusted, I'm really excited for this video. Okay, so we've got this set up here, and right now we're just going straight from the signal generator to the scope, and what I noticed right off the bat is it seems like this BNC cable or the plug is not great, because if I wiggle this around, or is it actually the cable? Wait, I wiggled the plug and it seemed fine. No. Yeah, there's something dodgy going on here. Maybe it's not the cable. It seems like sometimes the uh, the BNC ground loses contact. That's not good. We need to get some proper BNC cables in the lab, apparently, because these crusty Chinese ones suck. Okay, anyways, moving on. This is supposed to be a 10,000 hertz, 5 volts, 0 volt offset. Definitely getting the zero volt offset because we are DC coupled. Peak to peak is five volts. Okay, so that's peak to peak measurement. It's not clear on the display whether it's peak to peak or zero to peak, but whatever. Does not matter. So it looks like we can adjust the duty cycle of a sine wave. Not totally sure what that means. Okay, good. Duty cycle of a sine wave means nothing, because, yeah, that would be insane. Let's adjust the offset. Let's go for one volt. Wow. Yeah. So it looks like as we adjust that offset, the peak-to-peak -peak value is not changing. And I forget what this is rated for. I'd have to check the tin. Of course, it's not labeled. I should, like, sharpie it on here. It's a few, a few hertz. It's rated for up to a few hertz. Let's test the output voltage capability. 
We're at five volts. What can this go up to? Wow. Five volts in, 20 volts peak to peak out. In the 10 volt range looks like we're getting 10.1. That's crazy. And the sine wave looks very clean. But of course, that's not really a challenge at this type of a frequency. So let's go ahead and crank up the frequency. There's no way to really type it in, which is unfortunate. I'm just going to, yeah, we're just going to, Let's just go for it. It looks like we're getting, what are we measuring? One megahertz, two megahertz. Measuring that down on the bottom there. Should be 10 megahertz, we're getting 10.0 megahertz. Now while we're here, starting to see some noise show up. Let's zoom out a little bit, capture a few Let's turn on the math channel. So that is some pretty good separation. Just looking at that FFT, that is fantastic. And there's definitely some noise, but the noise floor is pretty low. This is a pretty rough mat. I would love to get a frequency or a spectrum analyzer in here we're supposed to be seeing let's see if i can balance this a little better there we go hopefully that'll work a little better so i'm hoping to see 10 megahertz as that peak and pretty much nothing anywhere else and what we're seeing is a peak at 10 megahertz and a noise floor about 50 db lower not bad again this is a scope, not even a good scope. So I'm not super surprised that it doesn't have the best FFT on the market. It is quite literally the lowest tier of an oscilloscope from Rigel. I know you can hack this to unlock some extra, but I haven't. I haven't. Okay, now let's get nuts. Why is that brightness so low? Is that a setting? I, th I swear that trace, I can barely see it. Let me turn this down for a second. Does that get brighter? When we slow this down, does it get brighter? No, what is going on? Let's try doubling the frequency. 20 megahertz. Sweet, we're triggered. Let's try setting it to 30 megahertz. There we go. Not sure what I did to the scope before. Maybe this probe came loose. No idea. RF is weird. We are getting... We are getting into the higher frequencies here where if a ground lead breaks, something still happens because this is all ground coupled from the ESD mat. Hmm. Very interesting. However... That sine wave's starting to look a little funky. That sine wave's starting to look very funky. So let's turn on our math channel. Yeah, there are definitely some interesting things happening to that waveform. You can see those distortions popping out and those are real. At this frequency, I can visually see there are distortions in the waveform, so I'm not at all surprised to see some other stuff coming out in the FFT. In this case, I still wouldn't really trust it in the sense that this is not a device meant to analyze spectrums. Let's play with some of the other waveforms this thing can generate uh, just for a moment. Uh, Ooh, it's got modulation. Can you actually do like AM modulation? Pulse generator, burst, sweep, 
No. Should we want to change? Ooh. Square wave. Looks pretty good. A little bit overshoot. Not too bad. What's this? Pulse? So the same, but probably you can adjust duty cycle. Look at that duty cycle. Changing. As you expect, does this agree with our duty cycle? Duty cycle 30.2%. 40%. give it more samples. Should be 90%. Looks like that is accurate. Yeah, I mean, for what we're doing, this is probably pretty good. I'm just kind of playing now, if I'm being honest. That's a pretty nice triangle. Oh, that is so cool. And you can actually see the preview is pretty accurate. <laughs> they did a good job with that UI. They did a really good job with that UI, actually. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's move on. So it gives you a partial sine wave, like a chop dimmer. Half wave, full wave rectified, ladder, noise, exponential, logarithmic, sorry, exponential decay, some intentional harmonics. Wow. And a lot of arbitraries you can store. Oh, the duty cycle set to zero. Hey, awesome. I think this is going to be a very useful piece of equipment for our lab. Let's try to measure this with a probe and see if it measures the same. So it looks like we're getting 10 volts. Ooh. So this is not 50 ohm output? Well, I guess you get what you pay for. I was hoping that would be 50 ohm, but let's add a 50 ohm load. All right, what are we getting now for a level? 5.4 volts. That's... Nothing. So it looks like they are pushing some current out, but it's not like... Okay, let, let's go into the channel menu. <laughs> On and off. Those are the options. <laughs> right then. So, okay. Not quite up to snuff with professional-grade equipment, but at least they tried. Now we know, don't drive this into 50 ohm load expecting to get the right output amplitude. <laughs> And in this case, um, we'll just need to keep that in mind, especially for our upcoming amplifier series. Because in the amplifier series, we're going to need to feed some frequencies in to measure the difference between the input and the output. And it looks like for this in particular, if we're passing current into the amplifier, then it will decrease the input amplitude. So even though when we say 10 volts, open circuit, it is 10 volts. When we apply a load, that will drop. So we'll need to keep that in mind. All right, I'm starting to ramble. This was awesome. Function generators are great. Buy one, got this on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. It's like a hundred bucks or something. For a hundred bucks, would I recommend it? Uh, I guess we'll figure out how long it lasts. First impressions are pretty good. I, I like it. I think it'll work for what we need. I bought the 30 megahertz version only because I thought the 15 megahertz version would be just underneath what I would want for maybe using this as a clock input on a micro. I use 25 megahertz clocks a lot. So being able to drive this in as a clock signal if something's going wonky with the oscillator, I think that would be very handy, which is why we went for the 30 megahertz version. I think they got a 60 megahertz and then, yeah, you gotta, gotta go up a weight class, gotta go up a cost level if you want any more than that so 
This was my unboxing slash figuring out how the heck this thing works. I don't really know what to call this. Um, it's not a review. I bought this. Wasn't sent to me. Gotta say that stuff these days. But yeah, I don't know. I don't hate this thing. I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm not gonna return it. <laughs> I like it a lot. We're gonna use this and I think we're gonna get a lot of good use out of it. A couple of unexplored features are the arbitrary programming. Um, so maybe someday we'll need to do that and uh, we will. So yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching you for everyone. Special thanks to our Patreon members. Really appreciate the extra step you've taken of supporting us directly. It really helps us out a lot. So thank you. Um, but yeah, that's all we've got for today. So thanks for watching you for everyone. I hope you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs> See you in the next one, where we'll be doing circuits. <laughs> Bye.